Hi, I'm Mara Gladstone, Director of Programs and Interpretation for Desert X. Desert X is in its final week. As we reflect on this year's exhibition in the Coachella Valley, Desert X has continued in its mission to challenge histories of land art and to feature a diversity of creative perspectives from around the world. Our artists and curators share their own varied histories and experiences with the desert, with this place, just as the land itself informs their own creative process. This program today brings into conversation two artists from countries halfway across the world with very different practices. Yet though they must talk virtually through their computer screens, they find connection points as they discuss freedom of expression, their relationship to the natural world, teaching, and how they address histories and traditions in their projects. We hope you'll discover, if you haven't already, how their installations resonate across borders and cultures, and how their larger inquiries convey calls for communication and action. Zara Al-Ghamdi was born in Al-Baha, Saudi Arabia, and explores memory and history through traditional architecture in both medium and assemblage. Her laborious and meticulous process involves assembling particles of earth, clay, rocks, leather, and water. Her medium and her practice draw on the notion of embodied memory to translate and delineate themes of cultural identity, memory, and loss. Al Gamdi represented Saudi Arabia in the 2019 Venice Biennial and participated in Desert X Alula 2020. Siberia Simmons was born in New York City and her work spans photography, performance, video, sound, sculpture, and installation. She defines her studio practice rooted in an ongoing investigation of experience, memory, abstraction, and present and future histories, specifically shifting notions surrounding the landscape as cyclical rather than linear. She's committed equally to the examination of different artistic modes and processes and keeps her practice in constant and consistent rotation. Renine Bukhari, who is translating for Zara, is a curator and consultant. Since 2013, she's been running the gallery at Desert Design, a concept store dedicated to local artisans in Saudi Arabia. Along with other international collaborations, Bukhari was on the organizing team of Desert X Alula 2020. Now I turn the program over to our moderator, Stephen Biller, the editor-in-chief of Palm Springs Life. Thanks for being here. Hi, and welcome to a conversation with two Desert X artists, Zara Al Gandhi and Zaviria Simmons. My name is Stephen Biller. I'm the editor-in-chief of Palm Springs Life magazine, and I'm looking forward to meeting you both. It's been a, a wonderful exhibition thus far, a tremendous response to uh, both of your installations, um, and um, uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, allow our audience to hear directly from you um, about about your installations and about you as artists and uh, and our place in this particular time in the world. So welcome to you both. And um, I'd like to start off by um, having you each talk a little bit about your installations. Uh, you know, what the visitor is experiencing as we're talking right now. Um, and um, so uh, why, don't we, um, why don't we start with uh, Zaviria? Can you talk about your installation and the title? You have an interesting title. It's so nice to be here, everyone. And um, thank you guys for having me. Um, so I'll go right into my installation. It's, it's called Because You Know Ultimately We Will Band a Militia. Um, and it is a series of seven billboards um, on Gene Autry Trail. And it's really doing a few things. I was trained as a photographer. So I obviously think in photographic terms. So being presented with the opportunity to make billboards is exciting because it's, it's, you know, part of the American landscape uh, and, and the mythology, but also thinking about photography. But I also added images of paintings to the, the set that I was producing. And what you're seeing are both constructed images that I produced as well as um, 
paintings from the permanent collection of the Met in New York City. Um, and I wanted the works to be a conversation both about image making and photography and history and also um, contextualized within the kind of mythical American landscape, desert culture, motorcycle culture, heavy metal culture, but also tie that into um, the black rad radical tradition, which I think obviously if those two languages or three or four languages would in be in conversation, which is what I'm trying to do in this work, um, we may be able to, you know, continuously teach our people, our country, what it is that needs to happen and start to reconcile some of the things that needs need to happen. So that's the long short of it, but we can get deeper in. And we will. Um, uh, Zara, can you tell us a little bit about your installation? أولا شكرا على اللقاء وهذه الفرصة اللي يعني أعتبرها جدا جميلة إني فرصة إن تعرفنا وتقابلنا مع بعض أنا العمل حقي هو عبارة عن جدار تقريبا يحتوي على ستة ألاف قطعة مرتصة بطريقة يعني فيها ليونة فكرة العمل مستوحاة من تصميم العمارة عندنا في منطقة الجنوب ولكن استخدمت كل أنواع التراب وهي كانت أربع ألوان من 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 أمريكا من نفس بانم سبرينج طبعا فكرة الجدار يعني استوحيتها من بداية ما معنى الجدار وبعد كده حاولت إني يعني أفهم مفهوم كلمة معنى الجدار لغويا ونفسيا رنين تفضلي بعد كذا العمل يعني طوله 8 متر والعرض كان 6 متر من خلال العمل حبيت يعني اوصل رساله ان ان مفهوم الجدار لا لا يفصل بين يعني يعني لا يعني يكمن انه بيكون حاجز بين احنا البشر وبين يعني اي شيء وشيء اخر خاصة إني تركت إن العمل يكون في المنتصف ويبدأ الناس تدور حوالينه تركت فرصة إن المشاهد يشوف التصميمات المستوحاة من وطن اللي هو المملكة العربية السعودية ويشوفه في أمريكا يعني وتركت فرصة للمشاهد إنه يرى برؤيته عن معنى هذا الجدار. Uh, Zahra says, thank you for this interview and to finally meet both of you. She's very happy to meet you all. Um, Zahra's work is a wall of 6,000 pieces created as almost a soft sculpture. It was inspired by the Southern architecture of Saudi Arabia of her hometown at Baha, but she wanted to use elements from Palm Springs uh, and she used the different colored sands of Palm Springs. She wanted to conceptualize the wall and to think about the meaning of it as a word and as a physical structure. And she also wants to send a message that the wall doesn't have to be a border between people or places, but um, an, a, an, an obstacle that can be overcome. The concept of people walking around the wall is for them not just to understand the architecture of her hometown and how different it is, but also similar it is to architecture in America. Um, and also she really wanted the viewer to have their own way of understanding her work and not to feed them with too much information about what her work is about. Following up on, on that, um, can you talk a little bit about the choices of materials that, that you used in this installation? Um, uh, the, the, the decisions on the materials and also the sourcing of the, of the local uh, materials as well. Uh, بالنسبة للخامات اللي استخدمتها um, أنا حقيقة في في وأنا جالسة أفكر فكرة العمل عملت تقريبا تجارب كثيرة يمكن لا يقل عن uh, يعني استخدمت تقريبا أربعين uh, خامة حتى الفكرة الأساسية من الجدار هو الميلانات الموجودة فيه كيف أن أتحصل على الميلانات لأني أنا كنت أبغى أعبر إن الميلانات اللي تحصل بالجدار هي الليونة اللي بين البشر لما يعني إحنا البشر تتلو نكون ألواننا مختلفة لو إحنا صرنا لينين مع بعض فإحنا ممكن نكون جدار 
يعني تقوي من العلاقات فهنا بدات استخدام الخامه ادورت الخامه اللي ممكن تساعدني اني اوصل هذه الرساله فاستخدمت اللي هو قماش البوليستر يعني مزجت بالغره وبانواع من التراب طبعا غير الهيكله اللي بنت الجدار زهرة experimented with almost 40 different materials before she founded the kind of texture that she wanted in the sculpture. She wanted that softness, that pliability, that the, the pieces kind of mold into each other um, because she wanted those pieces to represent people. The different pieces of the sculpture represent people and their different races just joining together and melding together and being soft with each other. Um, and so in her experiment with these different materials, she uh, realized that this kind of polyester material mixed with the sand is giving her the kind of look that she wants so that these pieces kind of like, uh, kind of depend on each other and lay on each other at the same time. And you talked about uh, the wall not necessarily being a border, um, but of, of course, in this country right now, in this political climate, um, of course, the first thing people are going to say or, or, or think when they encounter this wall is they're going to try to relate it to somehow the border. Um, and it seems like the materials kind of even defy that, that thinking. Um, so it, it's the, the viewer has to work a little bit to, uh, to, to come to an understanding, no? طبعا انا اتفق مع مع الكلام اللي انا متوقعته انا انا لما بدات يعني ابدا زرت بانم سبرينج اول شيء انا حسيت فيه اني انا عندي جدار بيني انا وبين اني فكره في بانم سبرينج يعني هذا اول هنا بدات الفكره عندي الجدار اني اللي وقف بيني وبين اني كيف اقدر استوحى هذا العمل من هنا انا بدات اتجاوز هذا الجدار اللي هو موجود يمكن يعني موجود يعني احساس غير هو حقيقه مو موجود وهذا اللي انا اقصد فيه ان الجدار ممكن حتى الانسان يبني جدار وهمي وفي جدران موجوده وممكن نتخطاها واقعيه ففي البدايه كانت اني انا حسيت اني بيني وبين الفكره جدار خاصه ان امريكا والسعوديه مره بعيدين ثقافتيا مختلفه لما انا قدرت اتجاوزها اكدت المعنى حقي ان الجدار اللي ممكن يتبني ممكن حتى لو المفهوم المفهوم هو جدار يعني زي ما قال هو لوح يعني حاجز غير في حال ان احنا قدرنا باي طريقه ما نفتح في فتحه بنقدر نتجاوزه نلف عليه بنقدر نتجاوزه يعني في حال الرغبه ان في التجاوز ما تبغي تتكلمي عن ال عن السؤال عن الجدار اللي بين امريكا و اي الا آه بالنسبه لل ومن يعني من ال يعني النقاط المهمه اللي انطرحت في تفكيري وانا وكمان في النقاش مع نافل الجدار اللي يعني فكرته بدات من 2017 بين المكسيك وامريكا بدات اقرا عن هذا الجدار رغم يعني القراءة عنه اللي أكد لي إن الناس لما تيجي في أمريكا بتكون تيجي على بالهم هذه الفكرة الجدار اللي بين أمريكا والمكسيك راح على طول يجي فأنا هنا هنا أنا أكد إن إن يعني على قولهم إني أترك مساحة للنقاش هل هذا الجدار حقيقة يعني حتى لو تبنى بيقسم الناس عن بعض ولا حتى لو وجوده هو موجود راح يكون في تشارك برضو فأنا تركت يعني المعنى أو الفكرة من الجدار للمشاهد يعني أنا لو تبنى الجدار بين المكسيك وأمريكا أنا ما شايفته أنه حاجز يعني سواء تبنى أو ما تبنى لأن في حال رغبة الأشخاص في التشارك راح يتشاركون يعني Uh, Zahra says, I agree with you. I expected that when I visited Palm Springs. I felt that uh, when I visited Palm Springs, I felt that I have a wall between me and this space, between me and this country. How can I even think about making work in Palm Springs? I spent a lot of time trying to overcome this. 
I, I had created my own wall and I tried my best to climb this wall or to break this wall or to make a hole in this wall. But Saudi and America are just so different. But as I did my research and as I was thinking, I tried to find the similarities. And I just want the people who come to visit the work to think about this as well. I did talk to Neville about the border wall between Mexico and America, and I did have a feeling that uh, this is an important thing to talk about, but I wanted to open discussion to the viewer was that even if the wall exists, it's not separating us as a community, as people, um, emotionally, we'll always want to connect. We'll always want to uh, reach out to the other side. Um, this wall, even though physically it's there, we're always going to be connected to each other um, as people and as humans. And I wanted to open that discussion to, to people who are visiting the work. Thank you. And the language, the architectural language, of course, um, helps make it easy uh, for people to relate. Um, and similarly, Zaveria, you're, you're, you've uh, chosen to work on billboards, another familiar structure for people uh, to um, to engage with. I mean, so so you know, billboards are meant to to block out everything else in our sight and 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 call your attention to them. And uh, working in that scale is not really a stretch for you. Your studio practice, you do work on some really big paintings. So uh, can you talk a little bit about this piece and, um, and specifically the, um, the, the, the texts and, and the marriage of the text with the images? I, I found that fascinating. Thank you. I mean, I, I, you know, like you said, I've produced large scale text work. So text, text paintings are a definite part of my practice. And I have this, you know, I mean, when you, when you hand paint something and you also work with hand paint language, you start to, you know, and I've been doing it for years now. My, my, my love of language keeps increasing. And also like my, my, my desire to shift language and use language like one would do a sculpture or, or a clay or other material, like language becomes this other material. And so I try to use language in the way that I would if I was making a photograph, if that makes sense, or if I was making a sculptural work, it's, it's a malleable tool. Um, and I think in this instance, you know, I really wanted it to both be direct and then at times give you pause and be abstract. And I wanted it to um, provide, I wanted to use the language as a tool to both provide information, but also, and, and factual information, but also to provoke um, a bit antagonize um, and also to kind of um, confront and, 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 make you make the viewer have to just like kind of it's it's uncomfortable like I think one of the lines you know rupture your guilt amnesia is one of the lines you know it's like like what do you mean my guilt amnesia right like I want you to it has to bounce in your head like like looking at a sculptural work right like it can't it can't I can't be simple with the language um I need it to kind of get in you. You're going to remember that the same way you're going to remember because ultimately, you know, we will ban the militia, right? Like it, it, it's just language. You have to work with language the same way Zaha is, Zaha is working with, with material, right? Like you have to use it with that intentionality. And so, um, I was intentional with one of the works where I said California once tried to ban black people because California did. And so did Portland. And, um, you know, we did have, I mean, we have to get comfortable here continuously because we haven't made repairs here. We have to get comfortable with some of the language that lets the country understand itself. Because as we've seen the country, either there are, you know, every so often, every, 20, 30 years, there's an amnesia that happens. It's as if it didn't happen. And it's like, no, it, it happened, you all. Like the, the United, I say this all the time, the United States keeps, has kept pretty good records, actually. Like we don't know everything, 
but we know a lot. And one of the things we know is that we had slavery and slavery here for 300 years, followed by Jim Crow and housing discrimination and all other kinds of discriminations. But particularly, there's a conversation that needs to be had and reconciled um, regarding obviously land theft, obviously the construction of whiteness, and obviously the enslavement of people who um, whose, whose descendants are still living the ramifications of that enslavement today. And also <laughs> there's things like organize, unionize, abolish, uh, uh, you know, all of those things need, to, for me, they need to become regular parts of our uh, country's conversation. And, and they also need to be things that we have to start dealing with, be it through, um, the public discourse, the political discourse, the policy discourse, and also the, the museum curator, collector discourse, because all of that is coming. And when I talk about a militia, you know, a militia is like, it's everyone's fantasy here in all these different ways. This, the way that the United States most people in the United States are on millionaire row. Like they're basically have fantasies of becoming the wealthiest of us. No one really moves here to become, uh, you know, part of the bottom cast. They come here so that they can, you know, live the dream and, and, and become affluent. Right. So I need that conversation to happen amongst the most affluent which obviously in, 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 you know, that lands in the, in the Coachella Valley, there's a lot of affluence. And so I needed to, I need that conversation to just continuously come. And then it'll trickle down to the museums inside of the collector's homes with the gallerists, with the, and then it comes part of everyday conversation. Yeah. You know, one of the incredible things about Desert X you know, the, the way the installations are spaced out across the region. Um, people have, you know, a good 15, 20, sometimes up to 30 minutes in the car between, um, between sites. And I could tell you from a lot of experience over the years of taking people around this show that the most important time of the show is driving between these installations and the conversations that you have with the people in your car. Um, and I can tell you <laughs> when uh, we saw um, uh, the California sign that you did, the, the, the California billboard, um, uh, what did it say exactly? California tried to uh, illegalize black no. people. California once tried to ban black to ban, black people. To, to ban black people. Every time I'm out, that's a conversation or you're entering a reparations. These are conversation starters. It doesn't matter what color you are. If you're in a car and you're experiencing this, the reaction is, wow, that's, that's on a billboard. Somebody said that. And the power is, is incredible. And, and it's, you know, very much like uh, encountering um, Zara's piece uh, because everybody is bringing their own baggage to it. Everybody brings their own history and, and um, uh, a, a way of reading it. So, uh, you know, I, I find that to be one of the most interesting things. It, it's, it's similar to going to a museum and, and, and eavesdropping on, you know, how people are talking about a work. But these pieces really... Um, are catalysts for conversations that that weren't happening before. Um, so I think that's extraordinary. Something that that art is is able to do that uh, you know somebody on cable TV news can't do. Um, yeah, yeah. And also, and just to add to that, because I you know you mentioned um, you are entering the reparations framework. You literally are. In, I wanted it to feel that way. Like I wanted as you were driving that you would start to think I am like reparations. Like I wasn't, I was thinking about my day, my yoga <laughs> practice, like going to the museum later. And it's like, Oh wait, reparations. Like what? Because it's both a call 
And it's also um, setting uh, an agenda for yeah. what you're going to engage with. Can you um, both uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, some of the reactions, some of the feedback that you've been hearing from visitors and, and maybe through Neville or through others who have experienced the work? And has anything surprised you? Has, um, you know, what kind of resonates from the response, good and bad? Um, you want to start, Zara? Zara? Yes. Um. يعني بالنسبة لردة الفعل يعني سواء الزائرين أنا يمكن عندي عندنا بالمملكة كان يعني في إحساس ثاني وفي يعني في أمريكا كان في إحساس ثاني سواء أنا كنت في الموقع وأنا أستقبل الزائرين أو الآن يعني يمكن هذا العمل يعني من من الأعمال الوحيدة عندي إن إلى الآن يعني إلى اليوم يعني كل الزائرين ينقلون لي العمل أشوفه اللي أنا ما شفته إلا وقت الزيارة ينقلون صورته ووضعه إلى الآن وهو يجيني على مدار اليوم الصور والفيديوهات كانت يمكن الإحساس الأول هو أني أنا وجدت كثير كثير من المشاهدين يعني استمتعوا بمشاهدة هذا الجدار خاصة في قراءة معناه يعني مو انهم يعني ما ما في احد قال لي جميل هم يمكن كان عندهم يعني زي ما اقول لك الصدمه في الفكره يعني في فكره الجدر هذه احنا عندنا بالسعوديه يعني اللي شافوا العمل ذا كثير قالوا ربطتي ماضينا بفكره مره معاصره زهر يعني بامريكا في الامريكا المشاهدين او يعني غير السعوديين اللي شافوا العمل هم حسوا حسوا ان هذا العمل في ذكرى في ماضي في قصه يعني في نفس الوقت حسوا ان الجدار متلائم تماما مع اختيار المنطقه وهذا كان يمكن قوه العمل ان الجدر اتبنى في منطقه جدا مرتبطه مع بعض Zahra says that the reaction of, of people who are seeing it online in Saudi was obviously very different from the people experiencing it Palm Springs and so she's getting both of these reactions at the same time. Um, this is the first work that she's made um, anywhere in the world that people daily are sending her photos and videos of it and, and sharing it with her and their experience with her. And nobody who's visited it has told her that it's beautiful or that it's something that they like to see. And that's really interesting to her because everybody... Um, usually like that's the first thing that they say but nobody has said that what people want from her is to have a discussion about her about what it means and so that's where it becomes interesting for them and interesting for her um, is the discussion that's coming out of the, the people who are visiting the work um, who are sending her then direct messages on Instagram or emails. Um, in Saudi their reaction was that people are feeling that Zahra has joined um, images of their past and of their childhood and of their um, upbringing within a contemporary way and brought it somehow into the now. And that's not something that a lot of people are working on. And so it's surprising for them to see something that's very elemental, something that's very um, like something from back home almost um, in a contemporary art show. Um, and uh, she also mentioned that the most comment that she got is that they they really felt that the wall always existed in the space and doesn't feel like it doesn't belong in the space that was chosen. So yeah, that's that's what she said. It does seem to relate to the landscape around it. That's it's uh, sorry, but it is beautiful. <laughs> um, uh, Xavier, you want to tackle the same question? Sure. Um, it is, and it is beautiful. I love it. I'm ex so excited to see it in person uh, next week. Um, you know, I've <laughs> because I talk about whiteness in particular with this piece, like, you know, there's, we understand the construction of the country. So we know that people 
you know, are uncomfortable. They don't want to lame whiteness. They don't want to hear about it. They think the civil war was over and like, we don't, why are you going backwards? Even though I did, I tried to contextual, I tried to make the work in the present actually, right? Like the characters that are on these motorcycles, you know, I mean, Harley David, vintage Harley Davidson's. I mean, that's a part of contemporary American culture. We, you know, you sit with that. I also worked with like luxury jewelry. Like I, you know, and I'm, I, I don't think I've talked about that. You know, like I used the quality of jewelry that, um, and silver, um, the quality of materials that you know, begats, uh, uh, billboards, and also is a part of the conversation now in terms of like, um, who has access to those materials, of course, but how young, you know, young middle-aged even, uh, or even wealthy white folks in particular have access en masse to certain luxuries, um, that, you know, a lot of the population does not And when you're talking about California in particular, you're think I'm always, I'm always going to go think about Skid Row. I'm, I can't not because there's 200,000 homeless black people primarily, you know, it's a mixed group of people, but in just that little area in Los Angeles, it's 200,000, I think, or in that mile stretch and across that. Um, so, you know, I'm always thinking about that and I'm always thinking, well, but how did that happen? Right. Like that's not just like, oh, these people fell on their bad luck. No, this, they're part of a generational conversation. If you have generational wealth, there's generational poverty and those things are intertwined. So funny enough, I just I looked at Desert X's um, Instagram and people you know, for the most part, it's been, people have been so excited and like very positive and very, that some of the people who I would never have imagined, it's almost like remembering the protest and you saw this multicultural coalition of people out saying, no, you will not break a man's neck in front of us. And we take that. And, 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 and the same thing has been happening with Desert X in, in terms of this project. So many amazing messages, so much love from people. Yes, there's always like 1%, you know, there's always like six, if there's 7,000 views and, uh, you know, a lot of positivity, there's always going to be like 50 people out of 7,000 that are going to be like, this is, what is this? You're trying to create the civil war. You're trying to, you know, you know, you're saying the white man is bad. It's like, no, sweetheart. Like the, the information, again, the information, the United States are, we all know this information. You might not know it, but many of us do. So I try not to get into a back and forth with folks online because I know that they're just getting excitable. But I would say the overarching feeling has been that of excitement. And it's been a, and it's been a multicultural excitement because people want to see their cultural institutions taking risks. And I think that that's what you know, Desert X did, especially I know with my work, like I know that it, it's a risk to take that stance, to to uplift ideas around reparations in the United States and to uplift ideas around um, thinking about the history and its ramifications to the present and what that means. Because every time we take these risks in artwork and conversation, it does move the culture in a certain way for those people who are looking at the thing. And so more and more, like you said, Stephen, you know, those conversations, my work is on a highway. So those conversations are happening in those cars, whether you disagree or not, the, the words reparations, the word unionize, the words undo, the words, oh, we did, we did, um, we, um, we tried to ban black people. Oh, that explains why our city looks the way it does. Yeah. And why these folks are so frustrated, angry, and are out and we're out protesting. Not just because Breonna Taylor and George Floyd were killed brutally by the police state, but also because historically our ancestors have a hand in this. And so you know, overall, I would honestly say that I have received a lot of love, a lot of support. And that is, I mean, 
that's an artist's dream, you know, and to have constructive creative dialogues at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the aesthetics of what you both do and the philosophies behind it. Um, and um, uh, maybe uh, Xavier, we'll, we'll continue with you a, a little bit. Maybe um, if you can talk a little bit about your um, your studio practice and um, uh, the different ways you work, you're pretty multimedia. <laughs> Um, and uh, I, I think that's a, a, a common thread between uh, the two of you. Um, uh, you know, Zara's work, I, I, I couldn't even guess what material you might use next. <laughs> um, it just seems like you, uh, you will find a way to use pretty much any kind of a material, and it's really amazing. So, um, but uh, Xavier, let's, let's uh, start with you. If you can talk a little bit about your studio practice and the way, the different ways you try to communicate with, with viewers in different ways, because uh, some of your works are, are more public, some of them are more institutional. And I, I'm wondering how you kind of navigate between the two. Sure. So, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's really a personal thing uh, conversation with me. I, I will give a little bit of background about myself in that I did walk for two years throughout the U S and the Caribbean and, um, uh, Africa, different parts of uh, that continent. And, um, I also did an actor training program. So I want to preface that because I think it's really important for people to understand my relationship to landscape has to do with like having had the opportunity to meditate on it and think about place very intimately as in daily meditations for like two years. And I think it's really important to understand um, me as someone who's been engaged with actor training because it, um, I, I think a lot about the mechanics of the human body and the mechanics of the human psychology and how to work with it um, in myself and then in relationship to um, igniting something inside of someone else. So that those trainings, plus being trained as a photographer, those trainings make me need to express myself in many different ways. Uh, like an actor, you know, doesn't just want to play the same role, right? The create the the thematic chord of what the things that they could do and what they what they want to do um, are often dictated in terms of actors are dictated by the opportunities presented to them by directors, producers, and what have you. Whereas with me, because I'm an artist, I'm not an actor. Um, I get to put my emotional states or my, my emotional needs, political desires or uh, material desires in different forms. And I get to choose to, to decide, you know, what form is going to make the most sense for what I want to, uh, what lever I want to pull or push outside of for myself or for the viewer. So I work in photography, performance, installation, uh, sound works, film, um, and, and I try to nurture all of these practices all the time. Um, I also have to work in between things that, you know, are really exciting to me or things that are like very troubling to me. Um, and I, I really try to, um, think about the formal processes of each practice. So for instance, when you think about photography, you know, most people think of it as a flat thing, but for me, I think of it, you know, it's a sculptural thing. It's, it's a way to think about sculpture. It's not just a photography practice. It's also, how do I think about sculpture? And then from photography, how do I think about, uh, text works and, and, and performances? And then how do the performances get me to thinking about, for instance, queer histories and, and homoerotic histories. And then, and then what vessel am I going to put that in? Is it a photographic form or is it a performative form or a text-based form? And then I have to commit. That's, that's the main thing is committing and then seeing the, the, the project all the way through in the language I've decided to commit in and the material language. And so that's kind of how my studio practice works is 
I have a lot of commitments to a lot of different materials that I have to nurture over and over again. Right. Good. Thank you. That was great. Um, Azara, can you uh, tackle the same question, talking about uh, the materiality of your work across your practice? Okay. Um, um, بالتجارب يعني أنا دائما كل شغلي يبدأ بالتجارب وبعدين يصير عندي زي الممارسة أكثر وبعدين يصير عندي رغبة إني على قولهم زي شبعت يعني فأنا الخامات أنا الآن دائما خامات اللي أدور حوالين الخامات الطبيعية أحجار أشجار تراب طيب السؤال المهم هل أنا عرفت الخامات هذه يعني خلال يومين ثلاثة سنة لا يعني أنا تقريبا أخذ مني الموضوع سبع سنوات عشان أنا اكتشف الخامات اللي أنا أميل لها يعني أنا في بعض الخامات مثلا التكنولوجيا من الخ... الشغلات اللي فيها يعني يعني مصنعية اللي فيها آلات ألاقي نفسي يعني نفسيا أبتعد عنها ألاقي نفسي يعني يدي تشتغل ك... يعني كآلة إذا على طول بدأت أستخدم الخامات الطبيعية عندي التشكيل يعني عندي يعني قدرة في التشكيل هنا تجي النقطة الأخرى التشكيل عندي شو عالي طيب كيف أنا يبدأ التفكير عندي في الاستديو عندي دائما مرتبط في التفكير بعدين لازم إحساس ولازم اليد فإذا اشتغل هذه الثلاث مع بعض تفكير إحساس مهارة يبدأ أقدر أوصل نوع من ال... يعني الإبداع في الفكرة عشان كذا بعض الأحيان أنا أحاول قدري إن كان إني الفكرة حقتي تأخذ وقتها في التجربة يعني أبتعد تماما إني أخرج فكرتي بسرعة لأني أول شيء أبغى أتأكد إني أنا هل أنا شبعت من الفكرة هل أنا وافقة من الإحساس اللي عندي لأني أنا من خلال التجربة في حال طرحت العمل في مصداقية قوية ألاقي الرسالة وصلت بطريقة سريعة فهذه تقريباً البروسيز اللي أنا أستخدمها في الستوديو Zahra is saying that um, when she starts working in her studio space she always starts with experimentation she loves experimenting with materials until she feels full um, or satiated I, she works with natural materials only every time she tries to work with um, machine materials or metal materials they don't make sense to her over the past seven years she's been trying to work with sand um, wood uh, stone and she wants to connect with them so she tries to connect with the natural material until she becomes the machine that's using these materials to put them together uh, her thought process then her emotions and then her practice become how she creates the work. Um, her ideas for her work, she spends most of her time in the exper experimentation process and she never wants to rush herself to just make work. She really wants to connect and play with the materials um, until she understands them and until they also become a part of her. And when then she creates the pieces out of these materials is when she makes the best work and when she, the work that's created at the end really connects with the audience because she's connected with the work she's connected with the materials um and then she creates the piece and that's that's usually her studio practice and uh, is really a lot of play there's a lot of play there's a lot of experimentation um all the time um even when she's not permission to make anything even when she's not um, asked to make anything she's always playing with materials the practice is very concerned about um, memories and history and embodying the past in a very contemporary form uh, can you talk a little bit about that idea and um, uh, well yeah can you just talk about that <laughs> آه لما ترتبط يعني أنا يمكن أغلب أعمالي إذا ما كانت كلها ارتبطت بتجسيد للذاكرة تجسيد لماضي آه لتاريخ آه يعني 
لتاريخ يعني بدا بدا من عند طفولتي يعني عيشتي في الباحه فتره طويله انتقالي الى منطقه جده وبعد كده سافرت لبريطانيا وبدات يعني اسرد قصص عن العماره عندنا في الجنوب لانها يعني زي ما تقولي ارتبطت بطفوله يعني هنا بدات الفكره يعني يعني كيف اصبحت اعمالي تحكي الماضي ولكن برؤيه معاصره يعني حكاوي الماضي هذه موجوده يعني ما انا ما اخترعتها بس ايش الجديد كيف انا اجيب هذا الماضي بفكر معاصر وهذا حقيقه تاثرت كثير بدراستي في بريطانيا سقل هذا التفكير بدات افكر ان الاشياء اللي حولي فيها احساس فيها روح بدات اقدر اتكلم يعني حتى يعني مع حتى العناصر سواء ثقافيه اقتصاديه اي شيء بدات مو يعني اقرا فقط اقرا والاحساس والمشاعر لازم تدخل معي في التفكير ركزت على الهيومن في داخل المساكن ركزت على القصص ومن خلالها بدات اربط فيها يعني سواء بالعماره برا وبعد كده الرؤيه المعاصره هذه يعني نتيجه الرؤيه المعاصره نتيجه زي ما تقولي قراءه جيده للفن All her works are embodiments of memories, embodiments of her childhood, uh, living in Baha, then moving to a city, Jeddah, and then studying in the UK. Uh, her memories are very connected to the architecture of her childhood. Speaking about the past isn't a new invention, but I really wanted to con- she really wanted to connect that with her contemporary practice. She wants to talk about how everything around her has a soul. Uh, when she was studying in the UK, she really focused on humans inside the home and connecting that to the architecture and the landscape of that what's around them. And that's what gave her the contemporary voice to her work <clears throat> is joining those kind of memories and also uh, the landscape and the architecture and the and the the soul of those like soulless things and with the human memory very good thank you and uh, as a very similarly your work super contemporary but drawing very much on the past um because the past isn't quite the past is it i mean we you made a comment about the civil war being over well is it really you know uh January 6th looked like the civil war to me um so um can you can you talk about that the the the, the rigor that goes into what you do the, the the research the um uh connecting past and present and and really making those connections for people i mean my i think my entire practice i'm i'm really situated in you know the both the histories of the materials like i mean photography is a a shorter history right it's 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 a 150 year old history if that um and then there's like the painting and 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 sculpture which are longer histories so there's the the creative um art historical context that i'm always trying to work in and then you know for a lot of my work there's also you know thinking about the american historical just because that's the place that I am and I'm interested in the political policy conversations that can be had or pushed forward um inside of the work so you know I'm doing I'm doing the 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 thing that you know black people especially in the United States are saddled with which is to constantly remember and remind and nudge and cajole and push the narrative of the com- of the of the of the the country because the material needs of the people haven't been met right so so there's that push that needs to continuously happen and also i am an artist and i work in material form and so i have to always push that 
in investigation. I mean, I love um, all your, and I'll say it like this. I love all your favorites just like you do, right? So the freedom to express um, hasn't been granted given uh, nurtured for many of the people that I come from. So I'm here to both um, be in conversation with those that have the most freedom of expression in the United States in terms of the visual arts, um, in terms of the history of it. And then I'm also um, here to push so that more freedoms can happen. Um, That's really like, there's two things happening simultaneously. Myself, I need to be engaged with your most radically free here in the United States. And I also have to make way. So I'm kind of trying to do both things simultaneously. And so that's why I pivot a lot in my work, because there are times where I just want to think sensually. And I just opened a show at my gallery, David Castillo Gallery in Miami, that is about landscape and the sensual, about looking at beauty and looking at color and looking at text and thinking about sensual experiences or a piece that I produced at the kitchen, which was looking at the photographs of, um, you know, homoerotic uh, kind of intoxication and the, the like kind of gorgeousness that, it, that can happen when you look at other people excited about each other. And, and so that work became a long form performance work. And then there are times when I made a piece at the Museum of Modern Art that is directly linked to the Museum of Modern Art's collection and how it has been mobilized historically, both by the museum or by artists. And this work, uh, because, you know, ultimately we will band a militia, which is both looking at the art historical but also thinking hard about the ramifications of having such a materially, politically uh, long history where we're all implicated. Everyone who comes to the United States, whether you've been here for 400 years, your ancestors, or whether you just got here last year, once you, become, once you step onto this land here, there are debts owed. (laughs) There are wealths that there's wealth that needs to be interrogated. There are conversations that need to be had so that we can have more people. We can make more um, people from the United States that have more, uh, more sense of material comforts and also uh, ability to play and have leisure time and not be just a cog in the mechanics of a of a capitalist structure. So all of these things have to happen inside of my work um, in order for me to feel like I've done what I needed to do. It kind of gets to that, that question of, of, of what are people supposed to do? What are, what are the normal average person uh, supposed to do? What's a person, as, as you had said, with resources supposed to do um, as they encounter work that that encourages this reckoning. Um, Can you address that a little bit? I think I love this question. You know, I love this question. Um, I mean, on a practical scale, you have to trust your artists. That's number one, right? Your artists are your guides. We are leading. We are leading the way, just like you trust your doctor. You know, you might go to four or five different doctors to get the same uh, diagnosis. But at some point you're like, this is this is the this is the issue. It, it goes in the same line with your artists. Your artists, literally, right now, your artists, for the most part, are telling you on ground right now as we speak. Our artists are saying something. The students are saying something. They're saying, "I want abolition." They are saying those things. What do you do with that? They are saying, "I want repair." They are saying, I want reparations. The young folks in universities and the artists in particular are saying a lot. And we have to start to follow what the artists are saying and take them for their word. There's that. And I, and I think that there's, um, you know, we have to get comfortable with the fact that a, a, a generational shift is occurring 
and, and, a, and a political reckoning is happening. And we have to get comfortable with those things. I know it's uncomfortable, but my question to any normal, regular human being in this country especially is, don't you want your children to be able to love who they want to love? And those people that they love, don't you want to, them to have the resources that they need so that they can love who they love? Like if your son or daughter falls in love with my trans, queer, radical son, daughter, them, they, don't you want them to be able to thrive together? That is literally my question. Isn't that what you want? Or do you want to them to continue to have the same repetitive conversations about material resources. What we want from our, we want to be able to go into our institutions and museums and have um, critical conversations that go past the point that we had and that we were having to do. And I think that there's a stopping in this, in, in the previous generations, um, an, an unwillingness to really have, not always, but in some respects to have these conversations. But these conversations are here. You can't stop the progress that young people are asking us to do. So, yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting because you, you, you both teach. Um, you're both educators, um, both women of color, um, and both have watched um, women certainly women of color, um, excluded so much from the global art establishment, for lack of a better term. Um, by that, I mean uh, museums, institutions, auction houses, galleries. Um, and that seems to be turning a corner. Um, and I'd, I'd be interested to, to hear both of your perspectives on um, kind of navigating this, this male dominated art world um, with super contemporary ideas uh, from powerful women of color um, and what your experiences have been and is the environment changing for you? Um, uh, who, 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 um, uh, Azaro, would you like to go first? Benisba, uh... الوضع اللي أنا يعني أقدر أجاوب على هذا السؤال أقدر أجاوبه يعني بأكثر مصداقية بالوضع اللي أنا أحسه والوضع اللي أنا عشته يعني إحنا عندنا دحين حاليا بالسعودية نقلة يعني إحنا دائما نسميه العصر الذهبي الفني يعني سواء للمرأة أو للرجل يعني و يعني أنا حاليا يعني بتكلم محليا يعني بالسعودية وبالخليج أنا جاسة يعني على قد ما أنا جاسة أعطي أنا جاسة أخذ يعني ماني حاسة يعني بأي يعني يعني على قولهم عدم تسوية بيني أنا والرجل يعني أنا هذا اللي أنا حاسته إن في بالعكس في في إيجابية لكل المجتمع تجاه المرأة في دعم كبير سواء على المستوى المحلي أو المؤسسي أو الحكومي أو المجتمعي والمستوى العالمي يعني في المرحلة اللي أنا يمكن دي تقريبا تسع سنوات في المعارض حاسة إن دور المرأة يعني في قوة في يعني قوة في عرضها قوة في تقديمها للأعمال لدرجة تماما في حياتي لما أشوف العمل ما أفكر إنه رجل أو مرأة يعني أنا من الناحية دي ما فكرت مرة في خلال حياتي فنية إن إن رجل أو مرأة أو أبيض أو أي يعني هذه المفاهيم عمرها ما تطرقت لها حاليا أنا أسعى الآن يعني كأني أستاذة بالجامعة كيف أنا يعني أدعم دور الطالب وخاصة أني أدرس في مدارس كلها طالبات كيف أدعم دورها في في الفن كيف يعني يعني أدعم طالباتي تلاقي مكانها في الفن كيف أنا دائما أحاول أوصل لهم إن الفن حياة يعني الفن كيف يصيروا شغوفات يعني هذا اللي تقريبا الدور اللي جالسة أشتغل فيه حاليا أوكي أما تبغى تتكلمي عن الوضع العالمي الوضع العالمي أنا ما أقدر لأني أنا ماني شايفة يمكن في غيري حس ويقدر يوصل المعلومة غير أنا أقول لك عالميا يعني 
خرجت يعني في بريطانيا في ألمانيا في إيطاليا كشخص أنا يعني لقيت لي مكانتي يعني ما حسيت في أي يعني أو تفرقة حتى أني أنا جلست مع ناس وأسمع منهم هذا الكلام حقيقة ما أقدر أوصل لك هذه النقطة لأني لا حسيت فيها ولا يعني أخذت يعني جانب عندي في يمكن لأني ما تعايشت معها أوكي okay. um... I'm going to kind of answer this one in, in, a, in, in the opposite way than what Zahra said. Um, <clears throat> uh, she mentioned that she can't really speak about the international experience because she didn't allow herself to be exposed to it. And she didn't allow anyone, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. She didn't allow anyone to treat her in a way that belittles her or that, uh, makes her feel different than um, any other gender. Um, right now, she's living in a moment of change in Saudi. There's a lot of change with the way that they're treating women and the way that they're allowing, giving women space, actually. Um, and so she is, has been giving a lot, but she's also been receiving a lot in response. Um, And, in, and when she started joining the global art space uh, in the, over the past nine years, she's been feeling more and more the power of women, the, that how much space they're, they're, <clears throat> they're allowed to, um, how, how much space they've taken and <clears throat> how, um, how, how they've been able to create work where you don't see gender anymore in the work. But as she started teaching in her universe, in university, and because she's only teaching women, um, that's all she's been thinking about right now. She's, all, she's been thinking about how to support them if they join the international art scene, how to empower them, how to excite them, and how to make sure that they can overcome these kind of obstacles that she hasn't experienced, but she knows exists. Um, so yeah, that was her answer. Zara, I, I would, I'd really like to hear more about, um, your, your teaching and your interaction with younger artists and, um, uh, particularly be because you're teaching women, um, I, I'm interested in, in, in terms of how, um, Uh, two things. One, you encourage uh, creation in general um, in, in, in terms of the freedoms, or uh, if you can talk a little bit about um, how uh, freedoms have changed or evolved for women, e exposing uh, young women artists uh, to the idea, uh, to, to embracing freedoms to, to create and express whatever they want to express. احنا عندنا بالجامعة لما ندرس الطالبات يعني دائما احنا يعني احنا بالسعودية تقريبا قبل مثلا 20 سنة كل دراستنا كانت بالذات في الفنون محدودة بالسعودية. لما حصل الابتعاث وصار في ناس استاذات يخرجوا برا ويتعلموا طيب رجعنا وصار يعني وانا كمثال عندنا اكثر كثير احنا عندنا تقريبا 25 دكتوره كل شهاداتهم من برا المملكه بالذات في الفنون يعني احنا عندنا قصور كثير في يعني في المصادر في الفن عندنا بالسعوديه او بالمدارس الفنيه فكان ابتعاث الحكومه ساعدت على ابتعاثنا بحيث ان نقدر نجي يكون عندنا انفتاح في التفكير عندنا تقبل الثقافات الأخرى عندنا يعني عندنا يعني عندنا ماضي وكيف نقدر نجيب المستقبل في الفن فساعد هذا النقلة الابتعاث إلى تغيير التفكير في طريقة التدريس فإحنا ابتدأنا مع طالباتنا كيف أول شيء كيف الطالبة نترك لها حرية التعبير حرية التعبير في اختيار الموضوع حرية التعبير في إنها كيف تعبر عن الموضوع طول الوقت إحنا جالسين نغرس فيهم كيف كيف يكون عندها التفكير 
مرتبط صح بأصالة وثقافة ولكن كيف تربطه بالحاضر الحاضر اللي ما له حدود يعني بدون يعني ما نترك حدود سواء حدود سياسية اقتصادية دينية لا دائما نحاول نغرس في الطالبات إن الفن ما له حدود في في أصالة في ثقافة ولكن الإبداع لا ما له حدود فتقريبا يعني حتى مواد التدريس يعني في توصيفاتها دائما نستمدها في في ان نترك الطالب المناقشه المناقشه جدا جدا تساعد في التفكير انه يعبر ان الخوف يبتعد عنه الحريه في اختيار الخامات آه كمان من الأشياء الجميلة إحنا عندنا بالتدريس إن الآن أنا صح إحنا ندرس بنات إحنا الآن قدمنا خطة ندرس فيها أولاد يعني يصير الكلية فيها طالبات وطلاب وإحنا ندرس الطلاب وبرضو آآ آآ يعني آآ يعني عندنا الدكاترة الرجال يدرسون الطالبات فهذا إن شاء الله يعني نقول بإذن الله إن السنة الجاية يكون عندنا النظام هذا In university in Saudi 20 years ago, our art studies were very confined and very limited. When the government started sending artists internationally to learn, the artists returned with a lot more information. This really bridged the gap between, um, bridged the gap between our thinking process, our art process, and, um, and, and how to think in a, in a more open perspective. We have our past and we have our history, but we didn't have a vision for the future. And so now I teach my students how to express freely, how to think, um, how to be attached to your culture, but not to have limits when you create art because art has no limits. You can have your traditions, but your creativity should be limitless. We're trying to also teach students how to debate and discuss and to not have fear when they're at school. And these are all things that we didn't have growing up and that we didn't have in our universities um, when, we were, when, when Zahra was younger. Also recently, she's been trying to um, add uh, boys and young men to the university, which is something that's really not done in Saudi. They don't have gender mixing, <laughs> but she's trying to start that and also for artists who are men to teach the women as well so that's what she's working on right now to have um, to not to separate um, these young people and hopefully that'll be done next year that's amazing thank you uh, Zaviria uh, similarly I know that you've uh, um, done some teaching is that right Yeah, um, I just wanted to mention that I had to come indoors because I had a computer uh, that needed to be charged. So here I am indoors. So that will explain the change of scenery. Um, but you get to see two sides, <laughs> as would be my drama. Um, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting because it's interesting to hear different ideas around teaching and thinking about um, the university. So I've taught, um, I've taught at the, at Yale, uh, I've uh, at, at School of the Art Institute. Um, I had a, a year long fellowship at Harvard um, and I taught in the arts school there. Um, and for me, you know, it's interesting, I have, a strange relationship with te teaching right now because I also understand the mechanics of the institutions here. And I understand that, you know, this is going to go back to my project of Desert X, you know, I understand that the university is tied to the construction of, of this country and the continuation of this country. So for me, teaching at Harvard, and I want to be transparent, I was paid very well to teach at Harvard. And I want to say that because I never really, I always wanted to be an artist first. I, I, I you know, and, and when you decide to become an artist in the United States, you, you basically are gambling on like yourself, right? And 
taking great risks because you don't know what the path is going to be. Um, and so in the United States, um, you know, mo a lot of artists become professors or teachers. The problem is, is that the university um, obviously is going to co-opt the ideas, but does the u university fully take in the ideas um, of what its intellectuals, artists, professors are saying? Mm -hmm. And I, it's very difficult for me um, to work under those conditions because what I realize, and this ties into one of the works in Dev Desert X, which is the, the, the one with, with the character that's holding James Baldwin. And it says, you keep our most brilliant minds in a perpetual loop, um, navigating and translating the ramifications of your generational plunder. I mean, that Harvard, for instance, which is where I taught, Harvard was built, <laughs> you know, off of uh, sugar, sugar, fat, sugar uh, wealth. You know what I'm saying? Like sugar wealth that's tied to slavery, both in the Caribbean and then in the United States. We have to sit with that. We have to sit with that. The university understands that. It knows its history. The students understand that. And so what do you do with that? What does a university who's been in existence, it's been one of the longest running institutions in the country, that has an endowment of trillions of dollars, but lit, but but also is situated next to um, some of the poorest neighborhoods in the country, where the average uh, wealth of uh, a black person in Boston is five dollars, <laughs> the median average wealth, and then the median average wealth of a white person is in the two hundreds of thousands. What what do you do with that? What do you, what do we do? Are we just going to keep trying to mint professors, lawyers, doctors to talk about it? Or are we actually going to move things forward? So it's difficult teaching, you know, in the university is very difficult for me because I, I want more from the university and I want more from my students and my students actually want more from the university and want more from me. And so I love teaching young people, but I find now that I'm, I'm better equipped at um, working alongside young people to get to, 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 to let them teach me and then we guide each other. You know, I feel that that is my best place. Um, and then in terms of technical skills, I'm happy to guide young people to where they can get certain technical skills to do the things that they want to do in, as far as painting, photography, sculpture. But um, the university is a very problematic space that I'm constantly in conflict with in the United States. Well, it's good that you're in the system so that you can work on it. Uh, it's, it's scary. If, it would be scarier if you weren't and you're trying to do something. So um, we're, we're running out of time, um, but I wanted to give each of you um, an opportunity to talk about anything that we haven't discussed. Um, if there's anything that you want um, uh, our Desert X audience to know about you or your practice or the piece that you've created for the exhibition, um, I welcome that. Um, Zafir, you would like to go first? Sure. <laughs> um, it's, it's, I love having these conversations. You know, I would, you know, it would be really amazing, actually. I would love for people, um, especially the Desert X community, um, people who are part of the larger community, even those that are not interested in art, but are interested in, you know, different types of conversations. I would love for them to sort of make many conversations like this inside of their homes. I think it would be so exciting to, you know, pair different types of people within your community to have the hardest conversations, to talk about, you know, to let language enter the space and in safety, to create the conditions where we can let language, we can let material into, enter our personal spaces um, and, and create the conditions of safety so that we can have these hard conversations. Yes, we, we, we disagree. You know what I mean? But we need to find methods um, inside of art making, but also in our regular lives to have these 
difficult conversations. And we also, what I'm excited about is to think that artists help people become better citizens. And the more you invest in art making, art practices um, across in your local community and then across the country, the more you invest in thinking artistically and creatively, the, 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 the scope of compassion compounds, you know? And I think that that's, and, and yes, art is tied to other things like investments and, you know, currencies and, and all kinds of other things that we don't talk about regularly. But we have to, we have to find ways to, to, to pull different levers inside of ourselves, levers that are different than the ones that we keep pulling each day in our everyday life. So that's really something that I'm excited about. And if, if our works did that for folks, if they were able to have a fireside chat where they talked about borders and walls and they talked about, you know, women and art making and they talked about reparations and they talked about, um, you know, the policies that their ancestors, you know, were interested in that they are no longer. I mean, that is our, that is, we have done the damn thing. And now how are we going to move those things forward? That's excellent. Thank you. Brilliant, brilliant way to leave it. Um, Tara, would you uh, like to add anything to, uh, to what we discussed? I desert X. I mean, 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 أضاف لي مو كشخصية كشخص فقط حتى في تفكيري حتى في علاقاتي مع الفنانين أنا حسيت إن الديزرت إكس يعني يعني من جد صح أنا حلمت فيه وتوقعته وتخيلته ولكن الواقع كان مخ يعني أفضل أو اللي ما ما تخيلته فهو حلم أنا لم أحلم فيه زائد إن ديزرت إكس المعرض اللي ما له حدود يعني أنا إيش اللي يمكن أسعدني إن إن يعني لما أقول لك إني إلى اللحظة الآن وأنا أشوف الزائرين ينقلون المعلومات رغم بعد المسافة هذا هنا يجي دازت إكس يعني كيف جمع فنانين من أقطار مختلفة يعني في مكان يعني قريب واحد إلى إن العالم كله يشوف دازت إكس دزرت إكس المعرض اللي ما له حدود شكلا ما له حدود ولكن حتى حقيقة وواقعيا حقيقة إنه يعني أنا عالم مختلف مثلا تناقلنا تبادلنا الرسائل تبادلنا الآراء حتى الفنانين إنه اختلافهم من بلدان مختلفة أضاف لي كثير عشان كذا لما أنا أقول دزرت إكس هو حلم لم أحلم به يعني أقل يعني Thank you. Dr. Zahra just wants to really thank Desert X. She feels like Desert X was a dream that she never even dreamt of. It really helped her think beyond uh, the confines of what she was taught to think. And this exhibition like really came to her without limitations, physical limitations, as in like choose the space that you want, and even thought process limitations, which she's never actually had. And even though the work was so far away from her, people still connect with the work on a daily basis. And for that, she's like, she's very grateful for the opportunity and she's very grateful that she could be a part of this and to be with artists such as Siberia and all of the rest of her peers because it was really um, a blessing for her. So thank you. Thank you both. This was an incredible eye-opening conversation, uh, learned so much more about your work and about your practices. Uh, so thank you very much for your time. I look forward um, to, to seeing you out here soon, I hope. Um, so uh, um, thanks again, and I hope everybody has an opportunity to visit Desert X before it closes on May 16th. And uh, check us out on desertx.org, and you'll get all the information. And um, thanks again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.